Hello, how are you doing today? I hope you are fine wherever you are and you are ready for this video. In today's video, I'm going to do it differently. And this is kind of decision that you are going to make for your Capsim competition round one and onwards, especially when you have sensed that uh, this is going to be extremely competitive uh, Capsim competition. And um, before we start uh, making this decision, it is important for you to kindly consider subscribing to our channel and also joining our membership program so that uh, next time we have video for CAPSIM competition round two in an extremely competitive environment, YouTube is going to let you know. And uh, for this case, we are making video for round one up to round eight, for round two up to round eight, uh, because uh, this is something that uh, we also need support for you to be assisted in a way that you're going to make those decisions. We'll really like to ask you to join our membership program so that uh, when you'll be uh, learning about how to make those decisions for round two to round eight, you can have assisted hand. Like uh, you can conduct us in case you have any question or something does not go as planned because the competition is not always the same. They change depending on different situation and also the fact that we all think different and we all make decisions differently. Therefore, to really be important, if you can have somebody who can try to analyze the situation that is specific in your case and try to come up with a better decision. And that's why we are requesting you to join our membership program. And um, having said that, uh, kindly, let's go straight to research and development and we'll try and we'll start making decision for uh, this section. And then first thing, let's check the customer requirement is very important because um, you cannot make something that uh, you don't know what customer are looking for. But uh, when you have an idea like what customers are expecting from your product, then you can make a perfect product. And um, here you can see for traditional market segment, an age of 2.0 is very important. Therefore, always ensure that uh, when you revise the product, you at least try to get uh, close to two year, 2 .0 years at the end of the year while revising the, your product. Or at the point of making that revision, at least make sure the age is closer to 2.0. Usually, it's not feasible or possible to have exact 2.0 because um, as we move from one month to the next one, the age changes and this product keep on aging regardless of whether you revise it. Therefore, there's nowhere that uh, you're going to get exactly 2.0. And then uh, another thing that um, is very important, especially when making this decision, always consider checking the industrial condition report and especially the drift. And here we have been given the drift for rich market segment. For traditional, you can see we have been given positive 0 0.7 and negative 0 0.7. That is for performance and size respectively. And also you have for other market segment. Therefore, with this drift, it's going to help you to calculate the ideal spot. The ideal spot is the area on the market segment where you can maximize your sales or you can have the highest sales or areas where customers really feel those products have met their segment requirements. And uh, with that, uh, let's make some changes for our product table. Here we can try 6.2, uh, that is for performance. And for each size, you can try 13.8. And also remember, you need to try and find areas where you can gain competitive advantage. As we have said already, this decision we are going to make for, um, we are going to make decision for CAPSIM competition round that are very or extremely competitive and you try to win. And this means anything that is going to bring you about a competitive advantage is very essential. Therefore, you are not leaving anything to chance. And uh, let's go to traditional market segment. We have traditional. And here is the reliability. Usually, we will leave the way it is, 17,500. But again, uh, this is for extremely competitive environment. Therefore, this 9% really matter, despite the fact that um, it seems like a very small thing. And that is the reason why you can see here we are trying to have the highest, which is uh, 19,000. And we can see the revision date for this product is going to be around 
and at that time the age at revision will be 1.8 which is closer to 2.0 years which is required in this market segment and also when we check the perceptual map you can see able is closely to segment center and when you do the situation analysis you'll see that um, for traditional market segment segment center is the same as the ideal spot therefore where this product is placed currently is a very significant area especially when you try to maximize sales for this product and then our next product which is a uh, acre low end market segment product again let's go to low end market segment and see what customer are looking for and here we can see price is the most important thing and uh, it attracted more than 50 percent of the market therefore it is very significant for you to ensure that you keep on making your product very competitive compared to any other product in the industry in terms of prices therefore usually those products that have the lowest price in this market segment have the most sales therefore ensure you try to find areas where you can utilize to cut down costs so that you can enjoy charging this product at a lower rate and then the second uh, most important thing is the ideal age of 7.0 years and uh, this means currently you do not need to revise this product because 24% is a very huge percentage to ignore. And um, if we ignore, it's really going to tank our sales and we do not want that. Therefore, what we need to do is for us just to sacrifice the reliability and maintain what we have currently, which is 14,000, but ensure we get the, much, the maximum of the most from 24%, which is the ideal age. Performance. 1.7 size 18.3 you can see we're already meeting that because we are 3.0 and 17.0 that is for performance and size respectively and um, current we can see the edge profile for uh, acre product is 4.6 and at the end of the year it will be having 5.6 and that means we'll be closer to 7.0 years which is required in this market segment now let's go to adam adam is a high-end market segment product and here the most important thing is the ideal position and this attracts almost 50 percent of the market therefore ensure you are very aggressive in revising this product so that um, at least you can enjoy the largest percentage of this 43 percent and again another thing is the, the ideal age 0.0 it attract about 29 percent of the market this is quite significant but we have a problem because um, it's not easy for you to attain exactly 0.0 years and the reason for that is because even if you revise this product it's going to age as we move from one month to the next one and then also from one year to the next one and the fact that uh, we all started from the same position having the same performance and size coordinate the same age 1.0 1.70 it means that uh, this is a segment program this is a segment problem and it, it shouldn't worry us but uh, what we need to do now is ensure, to ensure that at least we keep on introducing new product in this market segment therefore so that uh, at least we can ensure that we get this 29 percent of the market to really find an ideal age of 0.0, .0 to be very important to them and then another thing is reliability between 20,000 and 25,000 again you have said this is a decision for a very aggressive uh, market and that means we are not leaving anything to chance we are going to ensure that we give customer the maximum which is 25,000. now let's try here 8.9 and here let's try 11.1 and here let us increase to 25,000. and now you can see this product will be released by 23 September 2024 it'll have an age of 1.2 which is quite off from 0.0, .0 that is required but don't worry everyone is facing this problem therefore it's not going to be an advantage to any company and uh, you can see our position on the perceptual map is not quite that pleasing because uh, we are expected to be somewhere next to performance of 10 and a size of 10.0 that will be a very better ideal position but you cannot get go there uh, for the reason that um, this is going to take uh, more than one year and we need to revise this product quite often so that at least we can move its edge profile closer to uh, 0.0 which is required 
but uh, the fact that uh, most of the company are going to be affected by this therefore we do not need to worry whatever where we are currently can still help us to manage to get more sales especially the fact that uh, we have ensured that we are getting some advantage from higher reliability and also a very pleasing performance and size coordinate they, are, they seem to be quite competitive but it all depends on what our competitors are going to do and then the next uh, market segment is uh, performance for performance reliability is the most important thing customer want a reliability of between 22,000 and 27,000 but the fact that um, it is very important to almost 50 percent of the market we're going to ensure that we give the maximum which is 27,000 we can just start with that and uh, not leave anything to chance and with 27,000 at least we can say that uh, we are giving customer what they are looking for the most and then the second important thing is the ideal positioning and then the last thing that we can change in the r d department is the edge here they're expecting 1.0 again we cannot get 1.0 exactly but anything closer to 1.0 will just do okay and uh, here let's change let's change to 10.4 there we can change to 14.7 complete and you can see this product will be of the revised version of this product will be on the market by 2nd october 2024 to have an edge of 1.6 which is quite off from 1.0 required but not that bad and then here on the perception map you can see the product is exactly where it needed to be um, in the ideal spot and at least with this one we are saying that um, we are going to have an advantage of position our product correctly and at least i hope it's going to ensure we manage to maximize our sales to as much as possible and then finally we have uh, agape agape is a size market segment product and here ideal position is very important to 43 percent of the market followed by an age of 1.5 and finally reliability of between 16,000 and 21,000. again we are not going to leave anything by the chance let's start with uh, size coordinate and here let's change this one we can try 4.7 and here we're not going to give the maximum which is 21 but with uh, 20,000 is just okay but uh, as we move from as we move to the next round that is from round two going onwards i'm going to ensure that uh, we get to the maximum which is 27,000 here you can see the revised version will be on the market by 1st october 2024 and uh, also you can see its positioning on the perception map is not quite that uh, bad it's nearly to the ideal position but uh, still the positioning is okay and i strongly believe that it's going to ensure we manage to get uh, adequate sales that at least will going to help us to get some profits and then here is the twist now we said that uh, we need to be very aggressive We need to be very aggressive in this um, decision making that we are doing especially the fact that uh, we are assuming this is going to be very competitive uh, cup sim competition rounds and therefore we need to start it early and create a new product and when we do that um, i strongly believe it's going to give us some advantage over our competitor so here i guess nna can say okay i'll start by introducing exactly two products so you can say ak and then ak1 and then for performance coordinate of ak this one the first one we're going to introduce it in the high end market segment and the second one we're going to introduce it in the sales market segment i know you are wondering why are we not introducing new one in the performance market segment usually performance market segment is a very complicated segment and even in the next about uh, four rounds we are not going to make profit in the performance market segment the fact uh, that, that uh, this segment really need high automation sorry need high uh, reliability it attract a very high material cost and that uh, really make it difficult to make a profit therefore let's uh, select 
and performance coordinate you can have 10.5 and size coordinate let us have here yeah, we said let's have we can have 11 and here we can have 9 and here we can have 25,000 and then the last product we are introducing um, which is in the size market segment let's try 6 and uh, Eight point seven, and then we can have twenty thousand. So let us change this one. July 2025. Let's try eight years, six and eight. And it will be out by about uh, September 8th, 2025. This one let us uh, try 11.8 and 9.2. So it's supposed to be 10.2, not 11.8. 10.2. Uh, we had uh, 11, so it need to be 10.8. So and we can see the revision data has changed for a K1, which is uh, you are trying to introduce it in the performance market segment. So we are trying to introduce it in the high end market segment. And uh, 16 November is not uh, quite bad. And uh, for our size, Our size uh, market seminar AK1, it will be out by 8th of September next year. And both the product will be having an age of 0.0, .0 but uh, this 0.0, .0 is quite important for AK. And um, don't worry about the costs. And uh, when you introduce them, they're going to be quite expensive. But uh, we reap the benefit. You see, the benefit is not going to be after one round, but after two to three rounds, are going to see the benefit of introducing your product early in the game. And um, in this case, um, we still need to check the revision dates for most of our products. And you can see most of them will be coming out by October. That is not uh, very good because uh, most of the time we prefer a product to be on the market maybe as late as maybe late August and early September. Uh, with that, uh, it's going to be very much easier for you to maximize sales because um, you'll have more than three months of selling the revised version. But in this case, the fact that we are introducing new product that is going to read to eat on our R&D, uh, human resource and other factors, and is going to also affect other products in this, uh, other product that we are trying to revise. And that's the reason why you can see our revision dates have changed. But again, Capsim is a game of sacrifice. You need to, to sacrifice some time and also some round for you to maximize the benefit that we're going to get in future. And um, if you do this early in the game, the benefit is first, you are going to really enjoy increasing your customer accessibility quite faster. The second thing you're going to increase your market share and also you're going to increase your profit. And with higher profit, um, that's how you're going to grow some things like uh, stock prices, return on equity, return on asset. And those are the some of key metrics that they use to gauge your ability 
to do Capsim because Capsim is a virtual company and they are trying to measure your ability to manage different departments. And uh, now with uh, that um, having done the research and development, in case you have any question or you might need help completing your Capsim and you really feel like um, this is going to be very extremely competitive with Capsim, you can reach to us. We are providing the link on the video description and we try to work with you as you make this decision. We are not only going to help you analyze those reports, but also try to find areas that uh, we can use to find competitive advantage that's going to benefit your company, not only in the current round, but also in the future. And also remember, we have other videos that is uh, for Capsim competition round two, up to Capsim competition round eight. They are available on our membership program. Therefore, subscribe to our membership program and you'll access them all unlimitedly. And that will really help you to do your decision. I strongly believe it will do so. And now let's go to Capsim competition round one with the extremely competition expected marketing. And again here, let's just go to the reports and try to see how we can still gain some competitive advantage. But before that, let's just get some information, especially those concerning promo and sales budget. And here they're saying promotion budget this year in thousands. Promotion drive customer awareness. The more customer that are aware of your product, the more likely they'll choose your product. You can think of a promotion as a driving all in interaction with the customer before they begin to actively shop. Awareness decay over time, you lose about a third each year as customers forget the product. If your product had 60% awareness last year, this year it will fall to 40% if you spend zero to promote the product. Promotion efforts are subject to diminishing return. Your first 1 million increases awareness about 22%. The second million add another 23% and that million only add another 5%. Here are two examples. Suppose you had 60% awareness last year, one that will be lost, leaving 40% of customer aware of your product. If you spend 1 million, you'll end the year with 62%, a 2 million budget will yield 85% awareness, and 3 million will yield 89%. Suppose you were 100% awareness last year, this will decay by 33% to 67%, replacing the loss will cost about 1.4 million. Therefore, what um, I really find to be very important, especially when doing promo budget, is to ensure you have any budget between uh, 2,000 and 3,000. Because if you go beyond uh, 3,000 and you're only having one product in this market segment, you're going to be just wasted your money because you are not going to get equal measure of spending in terms of returns of sales that you're going to get by spending that much in promotion. Therefore, let's just check. The traditional market segment you can see our awareness currently is 55 we're trying to get something about um, 80 percent that means with 2000 at least we're going to get almost there and then also we need to see the survey we need to maximize the customer survey with the higher customer survey we are going to increase the we're going to increase how your product is perceived in the market and that will might translate to better sales in this market segment mm -hmm. And uh, with that, uh, let's try something like uh, 2150, that is uh, for promo. And then for sales, let's just check again. Yeah, they're saying sales budget this year in thousands, sales budget drive accessibility. Accessibility examine the question, how easy is it for customer in the segment to interact with your company during and after the sales? It measures distribution channels, sales process, shelf space, order entry system, customer support, etc. The easier it is to interact with your company, the more likely it is to customer will choose your product. A 60% accessibility rating means that 60% of customer find it is easy to work with you and 40% do not. Put simply, if you are a competitor, if you and a competitor offer identical product, you are more likely to win the sales if your accessibility is higher than your competitors. Accessibility is a segment issue. Product within segment are assigned the segment accessibility. Product in the rough cut are prorated, diminished return apply. If you have one product in a segment, there's no additional benefit for spending more than three million. 
if you have two or more product in a segment, there's no additional benefit for spending more than a combined 4.5 million. Therefore, with the 2 million to 2.5, that's okay in this market segment. Here, let us try something like, uh, let's try 2400. And uh, let us reduce the price a little bit, 20.5. 20 and with this information, we are estimating that we are going to sell about uh, 1350 do not be optimistic and also try to avoid using the benchmark prediction here they are saying the benchmark prediction is met in itself assuming your product compete with the standardized mediocre playing field does not use your actual competitor product it is useful for experimenting with price promotion and sales budget it is useless for forecasting therefore do not use 1920 provided here it's quite misleading and uh, if competition is stiff the way you are expecting, the likelihood of reaching this amount of sales in the first year is quite uh, minimal. And with that, it's going to risk your... And if you take uh, or you produce about uh, 1,920 and you sell, let's, let's say, about uh, only 1,300, you're going to have an inventory of more than 500. And that's going to risk you incurring emergency loan. Therefore, avoid using benchmark prediction because it doesn't reflect the true picture of competition levels. And then for the second product, which is ECA, is a low-end product. Again, here you can see we had a customer awareness of 52%, accessibility 40%, survey 12%. The price were 21 for each product. And again, here you need to see like, uh, Price is the most important thing. A price of between 25, 15 and 25 will attract about 53% of the market. This means any product that will have the most competitive price for their product are likely to win the largest market share. Therefore, let's try a price of $20 here. And then promo budget, let's try $2,200. And here let us try 2300 and then let's see how much they sold in the previous round. And you can see they sold about uh, 14.93. And again, I know you are wondering how you are getting the focus, especially because you have said that uh, you should avoid benchmark prediction at all cost. And here, what you usually do, you usually take uh, 89.60, which is the previous round uh, total industrial sale, multiplied by the growth rate, which is now 11.7%. And then, now you need to estimate like the, uh, the expected uh, market share that you're going to have. You may try 20 depending on your pricing strategy as well as promo and sales uh, strategy. And um, regard regarding the market share that you have allocated yourself, that's what is going to give you the unit that you're going to sell. But uh, actually it's not going to be the actual unit, but that is a prediction. It can be more, it can be less. So it depends on the level of competition. But um, whatever you do, especially in highly competitive uh, capsim, make sure that um, you really try to use a pessimistic approach. Not, don't be optimistic because most of the time it's going to risk um, high inventory levels and that will really uh, lead to emergency loan, which you really need to avoid at all costs. Therefore, here, with that uh, information, we estimated that we are going to sell about uh, 2050. For a detailed um, video explaining the forecasting process, uh, kindly consider checking our channel. We will also provide the email. We also provide the link to that video on the video description below. And for Able, we entered the wrong price. It's supposed to be 27.5 not 20.5, 27.5, and now let's go to Adam, Adam is high end product, and um, in high end you can see price is the least important thing, but the fact that uh, we have met all the other conditions, you can see the price also the main product in this market segment was at 38. And then their customer awareness was 49. 
accessibility 48 and December customer survey was 21. We really need to maximize our customer survey so at least our product can be recommended in the market by our customer. And also we can only do that by ensuring that uh, we maximize our customer awareness and customer accessibility by increasing promo and sales budget respectively. Here we can try 2050 and here let's try 2100 and based on that information we are not going to change the price we are maintaining the way it was. Here we are estimating to sell about 490. We'll calculate. Our next product performance price is the that important thing and also we see we had a market share of 17 percent our price was 33 and our awareness 46 customer accessibility that is 7 survey 20. let's start by increasing uh, promo budget we can have again also 2050 and here 2100 we are going to increase the price because we have increased the material cost by increasing the customer reliability and uh, with that uh, we are estimating to sell about uh, 510 units and then agape the last product which is size uh, market segment product uh, we had a 15 percent market share unit sold was 307 uh, price was 33 remember we also increased the reliability to 20,000 and then also we need to check the prices uh, range we have between 25 and 35 we do not want to go beyond 35 because we're going to lose points when it comes to customer buying criteria in balance scorecard therefore also here let us increase the price to 34.5 promo budget let's try 2050 and sales budget let's also have 2100 our forecast we have a uh, 519 calculate okay that's all when it comes to capsim competition round one marketing and this is how you make decision when you estimate that uh, the market is going to be very competitive you need to be very pessimistic in your forecasting but also very aggressive in promo and sales budget and also be aware of what customers are expecting when it comes to prices, especially for products in traditional and low end market segment where they are very price sensitive and a very a small change in a price can really have a very impact a very huge impact on the sales that a company is going to get for a particular product. Now let's go to Capsim competition round one production. And here in production schedule, we are also going to be very pessimistic. We do not want to overproduce and risk a very huge inventory because uh, the likelihood of uh, getting uh, emergency loan in an extremely competitive cap seam is very high. Yeah, let's just produce uh, 2100 because we have a very small inventory of 39 units. For Adam, let's produce about uh, 520. Inventory is also small, 40, for 40 units AFT. Let us produce about uh, 520. Let's just have 578. It's a very huge recovery in case the demand is more than what we have estimated. It's going to cover it up. And then Agape, let us produce about uh, 540. Now let's go to buy sell capacity. Let's start with the two products we introduced. Uh, we are not going to have a very huge figure. Let's ju just have uh, about uh, 200 for each and then automation we can have three for each and now let's go to the report again there's something we need to check scroll to low end and in low end we see price is the most important thing and the customer really like the price to go down and the fact that um, this is a very are extreme competitive cap seam the company that will have the most competitive price in the future is going to enjoy the largest market share the same thing applies uh, in the traditional market segment because now you can see price is the most important second most important thing 
and attract a very significant uh, percentage of the market, which is 23%. Therefore, for these two market segments, it's important for you to increase automation as much as possible and as quick as possible so that uh, whenever we move to the future rounds, you'll enjoy cheaper labor cost, and that is can be offset or can be reflected on lower price that you're going to charge your customer. And with the lower prices, your ability to have large market share and still make a profit is going to be high. Now you can see we have a, we are spending more than our quarter that has been allocated, and uh, we need to find ways to finance our capacity and automation changes for our original product and also for the new product that we have just introduced. Therefore, let's just uh, make changes and then finish them off and then we are going to find money that is going to bridge the gap. And then another product that we really need to max the automation quite fast um, is AFT because you see we had a um, reliability of 27,000 which attract a very high huge material cost and for us to make a profit for that product it's just uh, prudent if we can cut labor cost as we maintain higher reliability. So here let's try 4.0. Now we have 50,000. Let's try 4.5. We have 54. These ones, let's try for, for both of them. We have 60. Here, let us try 5.0. We have 62. Now let's go to traditional market segment and we see the product. And you can see currently for traditional market segment, we are only selling 961 units and the market is growing at a rate of 9.2. Therefore, it will take us uh, several rounds or even from round uh, one to round eight, we are not going to sell uh, as much as uh, 3,600 in this market segment. Therefore, having capacity of 1,800 is just wasted of space and money. Therefore, let's just sell half of this capacity and use that money somewhere else. And we'll just keep on adding capacity as the needs arise. Recalculate. And now you can see how we are almost there. We only need about 6,000 for us to meet the budget requirement in the uh, performance in the production department. Now, another area that uh, we really need, do not need that much capacity is for other high-end uh, market segment. And when we go to high-end market segment, you can see we are only selling about uh, 3,060. So we are only selling about uh, 366. And um, we have capacity that can produce as much as 1,800. Again, throughout this uh, game, especially the fact that the competition is expected to be extremely high, the chances that we are going to sell as much as uh, 1,800 is very small. And that's why we do not need that much capacity. Let us just uh, reduce. Now we have um, 33, we still need some, need, we need to find some money so that we can build this gap. And let's try, let's sell 350 here. And here let's also sell 50 units. Calculate. And that's it. We do not need to sell that much. Let's try here 330. Right, we can leave at that 
and that's all for Capsim competition round one production. In case you have any question or need help, you can reach us via WhatsApp. We have provided the WhatsApp link on the video description. Now let's go to human resource. And in human resource currently, there's nothing we can do. The option to make decision in this de department will, in, will be made available for round two. But uh, when we get there, the areas that we're going to make a decision is for recruitment spend. And here they're saying the extra amount you budget per worker to recruit high caliber workers, the higher the budget, the better the worker, resulting in higher productivity index and lower turnover. Your entry is added to the base amount of 1,000 per worker per new employee. Zero means no extraordinary effort is spent recruiting new people. Diminishing return apply after 5,000 per worker. And also we are going to make a decision for training hours. They are saying the number of hours each year that workers are taken offline for training and development, worker can spend up to eight hours, two weeks in training each year. When a worker is in training, another worker fills that position. Therefore, therefore, your complement requirement increase. For example, if you send workers to eight hours of training, you need to increase workforce complement by additional two out of 52 of 3.8% to cover workers in training plus. Therefore, the goal of human resource is just to maximize your productivity and cut down uh, turnover rates. And that will really help you to cut down cost and maximize your profit. Therefore, when you make this decision, make sure that uh, you give the best so that at least you can enjoy the best productivity index and also reduce the turnover. Because hiring new employees is quite expensive and also training them is quite expensive. Therefore, avoiding uh, employee resigning or laying off really go in a long way in maximizing your ability to make a profit as a company and now finance so before you do finance decision it is very important if you can check the balance scorecard because balance scorecard is going to show you areas where you are losing points and here you can see clearly you are losing points in days of work capital and this is something that you can manage in finance department. Another area you are losing profit. Another area where you are losing points is under profit. You are not expected to make any profit in round one because uh, now what we are trying to do is to try to maximize the ability of the company to be competitive in the future, and that is the reason why we are not uh, looking for profit in round one. But uh, from round two onwards, the goal will be to find the areas that you are going to gain benefits and also try to make a profit as much as possible and that is really going to help us to maximize the points that we're going to get in balance scorecard. Now let's go to ratio and see why we are not getting points in balance scorecard especially when it comes to a days of working capital we have 38 let's go back to balance scorecard and here let's see how you get the maximum points they're saying you're getting the maximum points for this one capital between point b and c that is 30 and 90 but you're having 38 why are we not getting the full credit i think uh, that is because uh, we are having a negative end cash balance of 26,000. we need to bridge this gap and ensure that we have a profit or we and ensure that we have at least a positive ending cash balance and that is going to correct the problem we are having when it comes to days of working capital. Therefore, let us issue the maximum long term debt available, which is about 18,000. We calculate. Still, we need some about 10,000 more so that at least we can end up with a positive cash balance. And um, we can do that. Let us uh, issue some stock. And now you can see you are having an end cash balance of about uh, 3,800. But uh, that is very small, especially the fact that uh, we're saying this is going to be a very competitive cap scene. You need to have a significant number here so that in case you do not meet your sales forecast and you end up with a very huge inventory, the likelihood of you incurring an emergency loan uh, reduces with a significant number here. Therefore, let's uh, take some short term debt. You can try 7,000. And now our ending cash balance expected is about uh, 10,000. 
10,000, which is quite significant. Even, even if now we end up with a significant amount of inventory, the likelihood of us incurring emergency loan is going to be very low. Let's just go back to Banner Scorecard and see how much we are making in terms of points. And here you can see we have about 49.7 out of 82. It's quite small, but uh, don't worry because uh, we're going to bridge that gap and uh, get some more points in future. Usually, capsing is a game of sacrifice. You cannot always take, you need to give and take some time. And that's what we are trying to do in this current round, round one. We are trying to give so much to this company in terms of uh, maximized automation, in terms of introducing new products. So at that, when we go to round two, on order up to round eight, at least we are going to have some advantage. And um, that's all for Capsim competition round one, extremely competitive Capsim competition round one. In case you have any question, kindly comment below and we'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. In case you need help or you are struggling completing a Capsim, you might have already started and uh, you are really struggling to get your company to make a profit, you can reach us via the WhatsApp link is provided in the video description. And also, if you are just starting up and this is the first video that you are watching, I really recommend that you join our membership program. You'll access the video for Capsim Round 1 up to Capsim Round 8 that uh, explain in detail what to do in each department for you to be successful. And also, you'll have an option to ask us questions and we'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. We can live chat. And you can do all those things that is going to really help you complete your same division. That's all for today. Have a nice time.